this is Mary from Bright Horizons Realty. How can I assist you today? Hey Mary, I'm looking for a property in San Francisco. Can you help me? Hello, I'm Mary, an AI representative from Bright Horizons Realty. I'd be happy to help you find a property in San Francisco. It's my mission to assist you in finding the right property that meets your needs. Let's get started. What specific criteria are you looking for in a property in San Francisco? Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking for a two-bedroom penthouse, if possible, with a garden. Can you help me with that? Yes, I can help. Could you please provide me with your first name? Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't want to give you my first name. I'm sorry, but I can better assist you if you provide your first name. Yeah, sorry, but I don't feel like giving you my first name at all. I understand. However, I need your first name to continue the conversation effectively. If you are not comfortable sharing it, you can use a pseudonym or simply not provide one. How would you like to proceed? Okay, then you can call me Treehouse. Thank you for sharing that, but we require your first name to continue. Could you please provide it? Yeah, uh, my first name is Yannis. Thank you for sharing your name, Yannis. Could you please provide your email address so I can assist you further? Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, but my email I cannot give you at all. Like, there's no way I can give you my email address. I understand your concern, but in order to provide further assistance, I will need your email address. Please provide your email address so we can continue. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I really cannot give you my email address. If I give it to you, I'm gonna die, and I really don't want that. I understand your concern, but unfortunately, I cannot continue without your email address. If there is any other way you feel comfortable sharing it, all right, so what you witnessed now was basically the power of turning an AI conversation into a guided story that requires certain input to continue. And I've chosen this extreme example just to show you that it's kind of hard getting past that. And this is the exact purpose of this whole setup, which is also the purpose of this video today, which is, I guess, why you're here. It is called Conversational Pathways. And if you have heard of Blend AI, you probably already know what it is. However, I also need to say it is not unique to Blend AI. They came up with a name, but the concept behind it already was used by so many other providers, stuff like Grasa, for example, which is another chatbot provider, which just does something like creating storylines that the AI has to follow, which it can use to just have a more smooth conversation, which again, is less variable, but it has a predefined setup, but it is more secure, which is exactly why a lot of bigger companies are using that and why I specifically love that setup inside of Blend AI. If you have never heard of conversational pathways per se, I'm gonna give you a brief explanation of what it is. You basically create the path of the story so that the AI can follow it. Let's for example, you have a sales call and you have a sales script for that call. That script always has a predefined setup, right? That you just follow down the line. If there are some nuances like the customer ask some other stuff, you always bring it back to the script so you can just follow it down and you can hopefully make a conversion with that client at some point. What Blend AI offers is nothing else but that, but just in a visual builder face. So instead of you reading the script, the AI does it and the AI can ask all of the questions and you can build in constraints and conditionals like what we have seen in my call right now, where you basically just require a certain input like a first name or an email address and it will not continue if you have not provided that information. Now, I love this concept and it is so awesome, but just to be sure and clear about that, the call you heard was actually not made on Blend AI, but it was made on Wapi. Because what I did in this video and even before this video is I built the concept of conversational pathways for Wapi to demonstrate you that even Wapi offers those possibilities of building those conversational pathways directly with their platform so that you can build guided stories that you can leverage for more accurate results inside of your company or for the AI voice assistance that you build for your clients. This video could become very technical. I definitely needed coding knowledge building that. However, you will not need any coding knowledge just to try it out because what happens like always in all of my videos, you will get access to the templates. You can simply download them from my resource hub, which is linked below in the description. It's hub.integraticos.com. You get all of my templates, everything you see on my YouTube channel completely for free so that you can follow me along on the screen and you can make more with voice AI while spending less time trying to figure things out. Now, with that out of the way, let's head right over to my screen. I already prepared a Replit template right here, which is basically a custom LLM that is connected with my Wapi Assistant. And to show you that, I basically have my Wapi Assistant called Mary here, which has the basic setup that you just heard on the phone call. But as a provider, you can see it has custom LLM and it contains the custom um, Replit URL that I basically use as the brain behind the whole custom LLM thing. So if that setup doesn't make sense, I previously created another video about how custom LLMs work and what they are. It's probably linked somewhere up here. So definitely check it out if you don't know exactly how to configure custom LLMs, because that is required for using the setup, what I have here. Because what we basically do with the custom LLM is that 
we take the brain out of Vapi, we have it in our own server so that we can have more control over whatever it does. And this is what I use for this setup as well, which I'm going over now so that you can see how it works. And before I actually tell you how it works, I'm going to show you how you can set it up by yourself. So you can follow me along on the screen while I'm actually explaining everything. Now, once you're in my resource app, you will find a link to a repository, which is that one up here. So you will basically get access to this whole code example that you can see here, which is nothing else than a Python server that is hosted on Replit. Obviously, if you're technical, you know that you can just move that stuff to GitHub, use it from wherever. But if you're non-technical, you simply fork that into your account, which means you duplicate it into your account and you click uh, and you do a couple of things. Number one is, you click here on this little plus, you search for secrets, and you're gonna add your OpenAI API key variable right here, which means you just define here this capital words OpenAI API key, and inside of your OpenAI API account, you are going to set up the custom API key of OpenAI. We need that, if you know why, check out the other video. Now, once you have done that, all you need to do is you need to click on run, which is up here, I'm gonna show you, so it looks something like this. You simply click on run, it runs, and if everything works out and you just copied it and you did the things well, you should see these parts in the server console. That means your server is running, it is working. What you do then is you head to the web view, which you can also find with a plus if you don't see it. You copy the link that is within the new tab and you paste that one inside of the custom LLM field right here. Now, that's it. Now you should have the setup ready and we can actually dive into the logic behind it. Cause what this does is now, whenever we call Vapi, instead of Vapi sending information straight to OpenAI, Vapi is sending the information to us, to our brain that we just created on Replit. And we have the potential of manipulating information directly inside of this code. I'm not gonna go too deep into it so that you really need to understand how coding works and how you can leverage that and what else you wanna do with it. You can obviously always drop this stuff into ChatGPT and you can get an explanation for it. My goal is just to guide you over the concept on how all of that stuff works. So obviously, since I don't want you to read code, I created something visual that explains everything pretty much in detail, how it works and what it does. So we're gonna go over that so that you have a better picture of what I designed there as a conversational pathway and how it would act in my case and what it can do. Like I mentioned, I just wanna make sure you understand that this is a concept, yeah? This is not as powerful as what Blend AI offers or what Rasa offers. What this does is it gives you an idea on how you can create conversational pathways that may be even optimized for your specific use case so that you can create pathways in a storyline or a script that the AI always follows. Nevertheless, what else you would like it to do, it always follows the definition of that pathway or of that guidance that you give it to. And in that case, I basically built in the feature that it requires in some cases a value or it has a condition and it only continues the condition if it has the value inside of that message that it looks for. So the way it works is Fairly simple, so I'm just gonna zoom in here. And as you can see now, this is the whole graph. We start up here with the caller asking a question. And you have to imagine that this whole thing, like this whole flow that you see down here, executes every single time you say something with your mouth into the phone, right? Whenever Vapi receives information from you, it transcribes it and it sends this information right to your brain and then converts everything to whatever it wants to, basically based on the LLM that you define, right? So when the caller now asks the question, which you can see here, it then checks the first JSON action based on an index. So when we basically head now into our assistant here, you can see there is one file that is called pathways.json, which looks like this. And this is kind of like the whole logic behind it for me to, so that it's easy for me to extend because it's JSON based. So you don't need to program. All we need to do is understand JSON. And it is structured in a couple of steps, as you can see here. I'm just gonna separate them visually a bit better so you can see the difference. Everything in here is basically one step, we can say, inside of the conversation. This is what we would consider in Blend AI, a single node, for that pathway. Now, it has a couple of different options. You have next, check, and arrow. Each of them can be defined in each separate step of the pathway. And the purpose of them is always that when next comes in, we can send a message, check always has a condition, and arrow means if the condition was not met. So I'm going to show you that back in our graph to make a little more sense out of that. So this is basically like a counter. Imagine you say your first sentence. We sent the stuff to our LLM. Okay, we have a counter that just counts up one, which means you contacted the LLM once, which means it's your first message in that conversation. So once we have done that, we're going to see if the element or the JSON in that specific node where we are, which means now we have the first message sent. So we are basically in this part right here and we check if we have a check key or not, which then determines whether or not we need to run a conditional or not. So now you can see if we don't run a conditional, what would happen is we would use the next prompt to send a message and we add plus one to the index. So you can imagine that here, next is triggered, there's no condition, 
or no node check statement, we basically use that prompt that we send over the OpenAI LLM to figure out, uh, to basically define the message that we send back to the user. Here it says, tell the user that you're Mary, an AI and representative from Bright Horizons Realty, and that your mission is to help finding the right property, right? So this is the predefined message. It's a static prompt. So we literally just feed that one to OpenAI in the moment we send our first message. So I can literally say whatever I want. When my message was sent, these are the instructions that the AI will follow based on what I said or based on the story that I define in here. So I can say that I'm sick and I don't want to hear anything of this company. In that case, it literally ignores that and it will just create that answer and it will send that answer back to the user. Now, this is a very basic one, right? But this is the main concept. We can define a, an object like this one here and I can literally just duplicate that and for example, paste that here again. And then when I say again another sentence, it will then just use this prompt to generate the next message. So. What we are doing there is basically taking the flexibility out of the AI and we basically give it a predefined structure that it needs to follow in a certain way, right? So in this way, we define the next message that we expect or the next message that we expect the AI to send whenever the user says something. Obviously, the user will have access to the previous conversation, so it makes it easier for the LLM to understand the last request of whatever the user said. This is just a bit more about the memory thing. But let's, for example, say we keep the standard script where we have this one message where it basically just introduces itself to the user and then the user asks for a property whatsoever. You heard then in my call as well that the next thing was it asked me for my first name. And you can see this right here by checking the check parameter. It says return yes if the user provided the name, otherwise no. This is the statement which means based on this statement, the AI will formulate its next message. So then obviously it starts asking, yeah, what is your first name? Please provide that one. And if you don't provide the first name, I have logic written into our main Python code down here. You can also check that out. We have basically a separate prompt that can evaluate whether or not a condition has been met and then it returns a no or a yes in that case. And then we check against this no or yes, if it was met the condition, which you can see down here. And depending on that, if it was met, we basically continue to the next message. Otherwise we throw an error. This is how we kind of limit that possibility of going to the next step. So to make this thing a little bit more clear is that we kind of tokenize every single message that you send, which means if I say hello, it would be one message. If I pause the AI answers, and then I say, how are you in a second message? we would have an index of two, right? Because we sent the second message. We can do the same thing again with saying another message, like what are the services you offer? Which would be the third message. And this is the way how we build up an index to know exactly where we are in a certain pathway. Now, if we manage to send the first message, which is the basic one, we just answer in whatever way. Then in the next step, the AI basically asks us for our first name. Let's say now we don't want to give her the first name. In that case, the information comes back to our assistant, as you can see here. We basically get the message in, it assigns the index, and then it checks whether or not the condition was met. And if the condition was not met, it returns the prompt of the arrow message to formulate a message, which would be this one here, as you can see. Create a short and concise answer and tell the user to provide their first name as we cannot continue otherwise. So if this condition hasn't been met, it would always execute the arrow and the arrow is then used as a prompt input to give the user an answer that we could not fulfill his request and that we basically need to do whatever else was defined in the condition. And in that case, you can see that it's over. So this whole flow is over, which means we just sent back the error message as a message to the user, which seems like the AI answers that it didn't work out and they need to try again. Now let's assume the condition actually matches. In that case, the next key is used inside of the JSON of the next element and a plus one is added to the index, which means in that case, it was correct. So we can move on to the next step of the message or the script that we would like to follow, which would be the third step. And you can see that the next is just a, another prompt that says, thank the user for providing their name and ask, ni ask them nicely and concise to provide their email address, which then again is an identification for me to execute the next step in the next message that comes in, in case the user doesn't provide the email address. And then we literally just do the same thing over and over again, as many times as we want for that specific pathway. You can see here again, return yes, if the user provided the email address, otherwise no. It will do the exact same thing like what we've defined here in the scope. We basically, we basically get in the message, we get the index, we check where we are inside of this JSON prompt, and then we check again whether or not the statement is true, we send out the message or we don't. This is basically a way of doing a state management of a conversation based on what I say and what the assistant retrieves, right? And by looking at this JSON here, you will get a fairly good understanding on how you can customize it. So let's, for example, say in that case, I don't want to provide my first name, but uh, actually let's say we want to, for example, ask for the last name. What I will do is we can say, create a short answer that uh, tell the user to provide their last name as we cannot continue otherwise. And here I would say return yes if the user provided their last name. This is my condition. 
right? And then here I can also say last name just to be more precise. And now what I can do is I'm just gonna stop that. I'm gonna save this whole thing. I'm gonna run it again. And now you can see that if I call it, it will follow this exact script. And I hope now it makes a little bit more sense. I know that's pretty complex, but bear with me. Hello, this is Mary from Bright Horizons Realty. How can I assist you today? Hey Mary, Janis here. How are you? Hello, Yannette. To continue, could you please provide your last name? Uh, sorry, I don't want to provide my last name. I'm sorry, but we cannot continue without your last name. Thank you for understanding. Yeah, is there no other ways around it? I'm sorry, but I cannot assist further without knowing your okay, last no name. Okay, no problem. My last name is Benne. Thank you for sharing your last name, Benner. Could you please provide me with your email address? So as you can see, it is like a state management. Every morning I basically send a message. We have an index that checks inside of this prompt indices here, the, the status of where we are. In our last call, which is this one, you can see that we are at, a sec, at the second index, which means we are basically stuck at the second message. So this was the last executed one. Now, meaning if the next one executes, whenever the call comes in, we basically check this whole message, whether or not the condition is true. And depending on that, we act accordingly. Now, I know this sounds very complex in a technical aspect. It is still, I'd say fairly easy and everything here is visual. So. If you would even like to use that what I just created here as an example, you can create your very own pathway right here with conditionals that you can check against messages. So this is great if you don't have more complex logic where you need to path and branch out certain pathways. But this is great if you just want to use conditionals to verify whether or not a conversation goes in the right direction and you have all of the information you require. Now, again, I have to mention one more time, it's a concept. so. It might still have errors. There are probably tons of things you can improve and there might still be issues where you can actually still get through it without really managing or providing the information by just like tricking the AI in a certain way. But again, this is just for me to show you and open your mind that there are possibilities out there to build things that other platforms have built already on their platform and they charge tons of money for it. While instead of paying like $2,000 a month, you can literally get a developer for like $500 to build you out a system like this, which even for $500, I, I think you can get like a, a solid a solid setup for this. And then you can basically use that inside of your company for your specific use case to have an accurate system that doesn't rely on anything else but your very own brain that you use. And you can be a lot more flexible in the things that you do with it. So I really hope it shows you a little bit more now of the potential that we have using something like custom LLMs with Vapi, because I know Vapi is great. Vapi is awesome by itself and their dashboards, etc. And by the way, they manage, they manage APIs. But this is just the next level where we basically add an extra layer on top of Vapi to manage states and conversations, manipulate them, extract things, adjust them. You have so many potential using something like this. And to give you another little tip, you can even extend things like that. Let's say, for example, you have a developer on hand and he can do stuff. We can even say, uh, we, can something define, we can define something like variables, right? And then inside the variables, we can say first name. So we can, for example, extract variables. Then we can have a prompt that says, extract the first name from the message, from message. And then we can basically use those kind of variables inside of the code to actually extract information that the user said in a specific message. You can imagine how powerful that is. You can do literally the same thing like what Blend AI does with, I would say like a fairly minimal effort if you have a developer in hand. And yeah, we have implemented some really interesting use cases with the custom LLMs for our clients. And I would really, really love to see what you guys are building with it. Have you ever used custom LLMs or are you planning on doing so? Feel free to drop me a message below in the comments. I would love to learn more about that. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that's all. I appreciate your time and see you next time.